Okay, so just before we start rigging, one thing I noticed was just through checking, and I said before I've used this character for um, an animation a few years ago, and one thing that I had a problem with was the back of these eyes on this character. So if I go to textured view and move quite far back with those eyes selected, you can see it doesn't look like the eyes are colliding, they're not passing through or clipping with this skin but with the eyes selected and moving quite far back you can start to see that wireframe coming through and it doesn't cause too many problems but as this eye starts to rotate um, the skinning in this area had to be really accurate to get these eyes to work so and to show this we've got the side view you can see that in this bottom corner here there's actually a minute gap down there so this is an area where in hindsight if I've moved the, moved the eyes a bit forward or scaled them down a bit there would be a bit more of a bigger gap there which would have speeded up the skinning in that area so for this what I found was I just moved the eyes forward a bit and scaled them down so a couple of things we could do, we could move that part area of the mesh further back a bit actually we might do that so if we select these down here and just move these vertices out just ever so slightly I might actually move these eyes forward a bit and scale them down and just check that there's no gaps and it's looking okay in like smooth preview there's no like m huge gaps at the side that we can see down the back of the eye so that's looking okay so that's just an area that from experience I found when I was animating this and skinning it it kept clipping a lot in this area and it was a pain and it wasn't really seen much in the animation thankfully but if for any it, other animations where it came to the back of these eyes I'd have to probably go back and fix this area because it'd be quite obvious what was happening so just from the start if you realize that I can just move these eyes and we're not going to have a problem now so because I move these eyes as well what I'm actually going to do is just select everything again edit delete by type history and also modify for these transformations so I said earlier that I'm adding these to the shelf so I'm not going to go through every single menu every single time I'm just going to some of the options I'm just going to show where they are in the menu and then every other tutorial instead of going through it every single time I'll just be hitting them on the shelf so any tools that you keep using just add to the shelf so freeze transformations on them and we're good to go. So the first thing I do here in here is open up the grid and make sure this is sort of centered in the middle. So I want the center of the bulk of his mass in the center of the grid. We don't want the character out at the front because we'll be rigging up here and it, you don't have really have too many problems but it's just always a good idea to rig in the middle and especially if you're doing some anim uh, rigging or animation for games this is a case where the game engine might require that the character is in the middle and also before you start rigging if you are doing games I'd recommend checking out what engine you're using because some can re require different grid orientations so they might prefer that the X or Z axis is up so I think UDK Unreal Engine has a different axis orientation so you can always change that in your settings before you start rigging so just make sure I quite like this position the bulk of the mass is in the origin we can center the pivots on certain things like the eyes is quite important to have them in the middle even though we were not going to have any direct animation on these eyes we're not going to physically select the mesh and start moving them about it's just good practice to have the pivots in there just in case we need to do anything with them later on and again we're going to be constraining these different things and group and we're never actually going to have any physical animation straight on the mesh so the pivots don't matter too much but it's just good practice so 
the first thing what I'm actually going to do now is select so actually we can just go create and empty group and all this does is creates an empty group basically and the reason for this is we're going to create a character node which is basically a hierarchy of groups to store your rig so the best way to think of it is your rig is made up of mesh, it's made up of joints made up of several different constraints and deformers or whatever you want to add in there and all we want to do is create a character node which is basically a series of empty groups that contain certain objects so we'll have a group for joints and all the joints go inside that group we'll have a joint a group for mesh and all the mesh goes inside that group and so on and this way we can order those groups in a certain hierarchy so we know that the rig components are all in the right place, the joints are in the correct group. So and again you can just think of it as sort of like a, a folder structure. You've got the top folder which is your character node which, can t which is your whole character. You open that folder and then you've got several other folders or groups. So it's just a way of keeping it together. So I'm just going to call this that's it, we're not going to give, so I'm just going to call this character node. Now, I'm going to have to thank Delano from Digital Tutors for this. This is where I learnt this, and I've seen this used on quite a few other tutorials, so it's, it's becoming more widely used. And it's just one of the main things, another golden rule of rigging. So I thank Delano for Digital Tutors, and again, it might be the best way to learn is to watch sites like Digital Tutors, watch Creative Crash, go on different tutorials on there, look at other people's work, and just pick bits that you like. So you'll find that through modeling, rigging, and animation, and all sorts, there's a million different ways to do things, but you'll always find the things that you like and just keep repeating them. So if it works for you, it works. So for this character node. I'm just going to go create empty group and I can hit G to repeat that command or I could hit control D to duplicate these groups because again there's nothing physically there so it doesn't matter if we're duplicating these at this point so we've got character node so now we're going to have a global move and you can see here I'm adding a zero one at the end of everything and you can have your own sort of uh, naming convention but the reason I do this is because in any case where I had a special if I had a special rig that had more than one global move group I could just duplicate that group it'd be global move O2 so it's just a way of having some sort of structure so you know that that's O1 that's O2 instead of just calling them different names or waiting for things to just hoping that it'll all work out another reason I used to add zero one one at the end of everything is because if you're doing some sort of MEL scripting like if you start to try rigging through MEL or adding procedural rigging it's a good way that it's like his eyes if I was gonna create a, a script that could create several eyes just having a zero one at the end means I can quickly go through and, and name them just with different numbers at the end just so I can quickly make them so I'm just gonna pause the video now and just go through and create the several different groups here Okay, so I'll just pause the video there so I can quickly make those groups because I know you guys don't want to see me creating groups and renaming them all night. So up here we've got the top of the group and to expand all the groups or everything below we can just hold shift and click the expand so this plus icon here to just basically expand everything underneath it at the same time. So here we've got the global move so I'll just and again you can hold shift and click it again to collapse everything. So I'll just open up that character node. So everything we create for this character, the rig, the skin, blend shapes, is all going to be inside this character node. And when animating this is going to be a big bonus because if you've got ten different characters, all you will have in your outliner is ten different character nodes. And they'll have their names. So if you reference them, which we'll go into a later lesson, but they'll have the name. So this is Barry, so it'll have be called Barry Character Node or one you might have another snail called Jeff character node or one and that way they're all in their own folder so 
they're easy accessible but they're also isolated on their own the rigs are spread about all over the place so expanding this we can see the global move so model blend shape extra nodes and script nodes so we'll start off the global move and I'll just press shift again click to expand all so we've got the joints so obviously this is going to hold all the joints but in here we've got joints BN and joints DRV so what these tags represent is BN stands for bind so these are joints that we're going to use for skinning and this joints DRV so this stands for driver so you, again you might have your own naming conventions but when we're creating a rig you'll usually use joints to skin a character so what we mean by skinning we'll go into a more depth later on but just joints that move this mesh are bound to it but you'll also have some joints that you don't actually use for skinning you just use for the rig to work so we'll get into a few examples of this later on but for the spine we'll have some joints running along the spine that move the skin but then we'll have some joints called driver joints which are there just to make the rig work but they're not actually skinned to the character so this is just a way that we can separate them into two separate groups moving it down again we've got IKs for IKs control objects which are going to be the control curves that we're going to, the, the animator is going to use so we know basically where to put all these different rig elements so also down here so control objects go down to to transform so these are just a few objects that your main objects are going to be joints, IKs and control objects but there might be a few different things in there that you want to come along with the mesh as well so we might have some wire deformers or different types of lattices and this is just an area that you can add those objects in and the case with the lattices and wire deformers usually you want them to work you want them to, you know, you might have them in certain areas to add a bit of deformation but you won't necessarily want the animator to see that so the control objects the animator has to see them because they have to physically select them and move them about and animate them but things like lattices and non-linear non deformers they won't need to see them so here we've got two groups to hide and to show so that's where we can just put them in whichever group we need and another advantage for this is things like the joints the animator doesn't need to see them when we're animating or the IKs so because they're all inside one group all we actually need to do is hide that one group and all the joints disappear so this is a case where debugging the rig is really easy because we can just hide the entire rig that we don't need to see but instead of having to go through and unhide every single joint if we need to edit the rig we don't need to do that we can just select the group unhide it and everything's, everything's there so moving on from global move is so basically everything there is everything that's going to move basically um, then we've got the model so what we're going to do at this point is select the mesh and just middle mouse click and drag to model or if I hit control Z to undo we can also select everything select the model last by hitting control and click and just hit P so both do the same it's basically a folder structure these items are inside this group inside this folder so really they're just parent to that folder that group so that's where we're going to put the model and again we might rename this actually you could have this as skin model it's just bits of the mesh of the character and then we've got blend shapes so later on when we start making blend shapes for this character we'll put them inside here um, and extra nodes so I'll expand this again and again we've got an extra show and extra extra to hide so things in here will be like certain things so global move is everything that's moving with the character but sometimes you don't want things to move the character you want then these are things that might be constrained to things in the global move so we want these to be on the own, sort of left on the own they're helping the rig work but we don't want them to move with certain objects so these are just extra nodes and these will be things like clusters or a lot of different uh, non-linear deforms will stick in here so we've got an extra show so a uh, majority of them are going to be hidden because we don't want the animator to see but we can have an extra to show and things like this 
are usually if we've got a pole vector on the arm. So we might have, and again, if you don't understand these terms, we're going to go into them in a lot more depth later on. But on this arm, we might have a pole vector, which will be a point out here that we'll move where we want the arm, this bend in the arm, to point towards. And just having a control off in space can sometimes be a bit confusing because as you're animating, this control might actually go inside the shell or it might go to the other side of the character it might fly off over here, you might need it over here so just by eye, if there's a control over here you've no idea what it does, you could select it, read the name but that's taking time up to check things and double check things so what we could do is just have a curve here that's constrained so basically it's just a line from your control object straight to the elbow and that way we know that's the left pole vector because it's got lines constrained and we have that to extra to, extra to show so it's not a necessary thing that the animator can select or can animate with or can use or has any purpose to the rig it doesn't help the rig but it's there it's shown just to help the animator see so there's little things we can add that don't really necessarily add anything to the rig they don't add any any functionality apart from just helping the animator and speeding up the animation process. So that's the extra to shows. And then under here we've got script nodes, which you don't necessarily necessarily can't say it. You don't necessarily need script nodes, but I've got them in here again because we might be doing some mail scripting. But basically, if you've got any sort of um, mail scripting that might use script nodes, so basically what a script node is is again it's just a group, but it might have custom attributes so it might have the um, character's name, it might have information about the character it might have several different attributes that have been used with this character so this is just another group where you can add those script nodes in there so again they're easily stored away so easily accessible later on so that's just a quick look at the character node and we've already started getting this sort of character into shape so as I said earlier what we're going to be doing is everything we make as we make it we're going to put inside these groups and in reality as you are making stuff like you might go through making spine making the arms you might not paint it straight away you might not put the joints straight away into the the joints group it, it doesn't matter too much but it's, it's just again good to keep a clean house in here and keep everything in order so that's just a overlook at the character node and again because it's all in one group when we reference this, which I'll go into later on, it just means that everything everything with this character is in one easy accessible place.